Hello, my name is Xavier Trudeau, Application Engineer at uh, CM Labs, and welcome to the video tutorial for uh, Vortex Studio Cables Module 1, Creating a Cable System. In this video, uh, we're going to create a cable system for a mobile crane. In order to complete this uh, tutorial, you will need uh, to have Vortex Studio installed, the samples and demo scenes are packaged installed as well, and a gamepad or any other X input device connected to your computer. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to be doing is to open uh, the sample of the mobile crane to which we'll be adding our cable. So let's go to open and uh, you'll find the uh, mobile crane in the demo scenes folder of uh, the Vortex Studio content. If you have installed it in the default location, you will find this in uh, C, CM Labs, Vortex Studio content, whatever the version of Vortex Studio is, demo scenes, equipment, mobile crane, dynamic design, and then we're going to be looking for mobile crane no cable dot VX mechanism. Now what this opens is the exact same version of the mobile crane found in the samples, uh, but of course without the cable. So we're going to be adding the cable to this um, to this crane. Um, our cable will have four attachment points. So it's going to start from a winch in uh, the back of the crane. It's going to go all the way up to this uh, pulley, um, down to this second pulley, and then uh, we're going to be adding a flexible segment between this uh, pulley and the hook block. Yep. Now, um, the next thing that we're going to do here is look for the uh, generic cable extension. So if you go in the toolbox uh, under cable systems, you'll be able to add a generic cable. Now, if we look in the Explorer at uh, the tree view of our uh, mobile crane mechanism, uh, you're, uh, you're going to see that there's already a cable system folder created for us. Uh, in this folder, we're going to see that there's already a, mat a material and a texture for a cable. Uh, we'll be using this for uh, Drew Graphics later. So let's drag and drop the generic cable in our folder here. And this creates the uh, generic cable extension that we've uh, added to our crane. Uh, now what you're, what you're seeing here, if you open uh, the generic cable extensions, are three main components. The first component that you're going to find under generic cable is uh, the dynamics generic cable. This is the component that is going to define um, the segments of our cable as well as the uh, collision geometry uh, material and um, a lot of other parameters that we're going to be able to tune uh, for our cables. The second one is the graphics. So we're going to come back to it later. Uh, this defines, of course, uh, how uh, displayed our, our, our cable is. And we're also going to find uh, the dynamics properties, which uh, define the actual physical properties of our cable, like Young modulus and relative elongation. So let's start by clicking on the dynamics generic cable extension. On the properties window, we're going to change some of its parameters. So first of all, the uh, material name it's going to use for collision. We're going to use chassis. Uh, the collision geometry type, we're going to put it to a uh, capsule. And its geometric radius, we're going to change it to 0 0.005 meters, which is uh, 5 millimeters. We're also going to activate the uh, geometric stiffness. This allows for much, much better stability in our cable uh, by adding stiffness and damping dynamically uh, when the cable begins to be uh, unstable. The next thing we're going to do is go uh, all the way down to points definition. So this will allow us to uh, define the number of uh, attachment points of our cable. So we, here we can count one, two, three, and four. So four. So when I change the size, I will see that uh, four attachment definitions appear. All right. So the first one, which is labeled zero, will change it to uh, a winch type. So now I need to uh, define a part for it. So I can click here and click on the browse button. And I can go look for uh, the winch part of my uh, of my mobile crane uh, to define the actual winch where the cable is going to be generated. 
I can, uh, if I have the collision geometries uh, displayed with uh, Shift G, I can actually click on the winch itself. So it's a part called a drum front that can be found in the mobile crane assembly under parts. You're going to find drum front. Okay. So I'm going to be doing something similar for the second attachment point, uh, which is going to be a pulley. So let's define it as pulley and browse for uh, its corresponding part. So let's click on that pulley here. So the part is called boom pulley top L. So boom pulley, pulley top left. Accept. So as you can see, since uh, the collision geometry is a cylinder, uh, you're going to see that Vortex automatic automatically recognizes it uh, and changes the radius accordingly. Our second point will be defined again as another pulley. Now this may be hard to click on this one. Maybe we'll have to find it. There we go. So again, it recognizes it also and uh, modifies it, its radius automatically. And our last point will be an attachment point. And this will be um, block weight. So the block weight is not under the mobile crane assembly. It's under the weight, weight hook assembly. It's the first part. So now, now that we've defined our four attachment points, we see that uh, a green line has been generated, uh, which indicates how the cable is going to be uh, generated in the first step of the simulation. So it, it looks good. It, it uh, identified you know, how to wrap uh, the cable around not only my winch, but also around my, uh, my two pulleys all the way to my hook block. If, uh, if it doesn't uh, wrap the cable accordingly, or, or as intended, you can always use the inverse wrapping uh, property for each uh, segment type. So if I click on inverse writing, for example, in the winch, I'm going to see that it's going to try to wrap the cable on the bottom of the winch instead of uh, on the top. And it's trying to, uh, you know, wrap the cable this way. But of course, this is not good because it's going to be uh, all the way inside of the booms. So let's not activate any inverse uh, wrapping here. Now, all of the attachment points have uh, a property called offset. This is going to be useful for us here for uh, the last attachment point, um, so our block weight. If we zoom on this particular attachment point here, and maybe we deactivate uh, the collision geometry, um, we can see that uh, the cable is actually attached here to the part and not on the top of the pulley block like uh, like we would wish. So we can use the offset to uh, to make up for it. So let's change uh, the Z component of, of, of our offset here to 0.22 meters, so 0 0.22 meters. So we're gonna see that our attachment point is now on the top of the pulley and not on the bottom. Now that we have the attachment points uh, defined for our cable, we'll need to define the segments uh, for cables. So since we have uh, four attachment points, we'll see that five segments have been created for us here. So there's a section called segments definition. And so uh, the first is our, so it's called arc segment definition, which is uh, the segment uh, wrapping around our winch. The second one, we expect it to be the segment between our winch and our first pulley. Uh, so we'll, we'll not want the segment to be flexible because um, of course a flexible segment will be harder to process uh, by a vortex, so it will take up more performance. And it's not particularly interesting. The, the segment which will be the most interesting for us is this segment here, right? So these two first segments will not want it, will not want them to be flexible. So there's a property called flexible definition with, um, which will, uh, will leave empty. Right. So we have a third segment here called, uh, arc, defi uh, arc segment definition again, which is the wrapping around our first pulley. 
And uh, we have another segment which will keep uh, not flexible, so non-flexible. Then another segment wrapping around this last pulley. And our last segment, which will, of course, be of uh, most interest to us. Okay. So the, the first thing that we need, uh, that we'll need to define for, uh, for this segment, of course, we want it to be flexible, uh, but it also the collagen geometry type. When it is undefined, it will use uh, the default value that we've defined all the way um, here. So we don't need to define them because we'll know that all of our cable is going to be using uh, the capsule uh, collagen geometry type. Okay. Uh, the attachment type at the end uh, will not be a ball and socket, will be a fixed attachment. Now we can open the flexible definition uh, tab here. And uh, the main property that we'll want to modify is the preferred section length. So since our cable will not be uh, not be that long, um, we'll, we'll we we won't want to use one meter as a section length because of course it's it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty big. Uh, we'll want to put 0.2 meters. So what this will do is, um, in order to simulate the the cable as flexible, Vortex will break the cable into segments that are a preferred section length of 0.2 meters. So we can already actually start the simulation and the way we can visualize that is by going into our Dynamics uh, Generic Cable extension, right-clicking on the eye and looking at the constraints. So we can see here that Vortex broke up the cable into sections of 0.2 meters. We will not be using the, ad the adaptive definition here, and we won't be using the advanced flexible definition either. These are advanced parameters that are a bit more complicated to use, but can help tune the cable in order to gain uh, performance if performance is an issue in your simulation. Now that we're done configuring the attachments and sections of our cable, uh, we can go into the dynamics properties extension in order to uh, tune our cable. Setting up the inputs of this extension will define the actual bending, torsion, stiffness, and damping of our cable, as well as its uh, linear density. So let's put the relative in logation at 0 0.02 for a load of uh, 300,000 newtons. Let's set the uh, Young modulus to 110, cable diameter of 0 0.02, it's already there. Number of wires, five, and a linear density of 2.5 kilometers uh, kilograms per meters. As you noticed, the, uh, the results, so the outputs have been modified depending on what we put in uh, the cable properties. The scaling factors will allow you to tune these results by applying multipliers. So here, let's change the bending, uh, bending stiffness uh, scale to 0.5 in order to have uh, a cable that bends a little more than what these uh, parameters would uh, normally yield. Now, the last thing that we need to do here is to set up the graphics of our cable. Uh, so let's go into the graphics cable extension under our generic cable. And let's set a graphics material for a cable. As it is now, uh, our cable has no graphical properties. So the default display is a simply a white round shape. Okay. So instead, let's uh, click on the graphics material properties, click on browse, and select the steel material that can be found under the cable systems folder. This, as you can see, will apply uh, the steel texture that was already created for us. Now, let's also change a couple of uh, parameters for the graphics. First of all, the radius is uh, way too high here, so let's change it to our actual radius, 0 0.005. Let's activate the interpolation and change the texture repeat length to 
With all of that done, you should have a cable that looks like a cable and is working. If you want, you can use the Alt key in order to pull on uh, the, the hook block and see that your cable is indeed flexible.